Right guys, welcome to part two of how I lay a laminate floor. Right, so now I'm gonna show you what I think is the easiest way to cut the boards for the last row. Um, you can do it with a tape measure, just measure various points throughout the length of the board and then strike a line. But I find the easiest way to do it is if you hold the piece of floor in where it's going to go and you've got to put, sit, sit it exactly in line with the board below it so it's flush you want to use a smaller piece of wood from the floor and this is just an off cut and that will follow any kind of curves or whatever in the wall so once this piece is dead in line Hold this piece up against the wall and then just mark mark a line. Little visitor bringing me lunch. Yay! Well, that was a nice, pleasant surprise. My stepdaughter and my little granddaughter, my little ray of sunshine, bought me Greg's sausage rolls. Yum! That keep you going for a little bit. Cheers, Donna and Emmy Ray. Right, where was I? Yeah, line your board up so it's flush, dead in line with the board below. Take your small off cut, hold that against the skirting board, mark a line and just work your way along, sliding the board along the skirting board. fit in there perfectly and that leaves you your 10 mil space in there about where the beading is going to go to cover the expansion gap and I find that is the easiest way to do it because if your wall kind of curves out and you don't measure it in exactly the right place, you might end up with a too big a gap or end up needing to cut more off. I find that this method works every time. It's really easy as well. As long as you take your time and make sure it's lined up perfectly, you shouldn't have any problems. If you don't line it up perfectly and then you mark a line, you're not going to get an accurate cut. And I think, think it's a foolproof method.
nice even gap just to make sure they're actually locked in position get your pull bar on the edge you want to put something underneath this end because you could damage the flooring just give it a gentle tap just to make sure it's seated properly And you just carry on like that. Alright, so here's another awkward part. I've got to get it under this door frame. So what I've done, I've notched the end of this. Put your board in. Use a little bit of the floor end to lock onto the end so when you hit it with the pry bar you don't damage it and then you've got to try and tap the piece along So now that's under, so I'm going to tap it as far as I can that way. You can see it all sits nicely. And just make sure it's locked in, which it is. And then hopefully when I cut this bit down, I only need to notch out at the very end and I should be able to get it underneath this one and lock it in place. So when you're tapping blocks together, make sure you use a scrap piece with the correct end on, because this will lock in into place there. And when I tap the board, uh, if I damage this, it doesn't matter, but you don't want to be damaging that bit. I'll just move it down a bit. And we're gonna try and get that to lock underneath that bit. Just take your time, gentle taps. All right, so now we're up against that bit of flooring. This is where it gets difficult. Hopefully, if I stick one foot on there to push this right down, I might be able to just tap that under. And hopefully I can still tap that with the rubber mallet. Well, I'm fine there. And that is that, locked in. And that is how you get round a difficult door frame. So if I take you off, obviously I've got that end of the road to do. I've got to work the opposite way to do that end but that is the easiest way I've found to do difficult areas like that right well I had enough today that's day two over with bearing in mind I didn't start both days until about lunchtime so I think the time's about half five now 
on a Sunday. So I've left a little bit to do at the bottom of the stairs, but I'll flip the camera around and show you what I've done. God, I look alright today. Alright, so front door, all the hallway has been done. Still got to put the beading on. All the way down the hallway into the living room. Right the way across the living room. I haven't actually mopped the floor. It does need a good mop because it's still quite dusty. All I've done is hoover it quickly. As you can see, sorry about the sun, it's a bit bright. I've still got that bit to do, but that won't take long. So overall, happy with the job. All right, I haven't been as quick as a professional floor layer, but I don't do this day and day out. So I've got the two upstairs bedrooms to do. They're a bit more straightforward because it's just like basic rectangle. And obviously I've got the beading down here to do and I'll have the beading to do all upstairs. But other than that, downstairs is finito. Not sure how well it'll show up on camera. Uh, if we take a walk round, you'll see what I mean about random joints. I don't like it when there's like steps going across the floor, so I like to keep my joints as random as I can. You can see none of them line up. Let me take a closer look across the floor. You'll see that all the joints are all staggered. There's no particular pattern. It's all just kept nice and random. And I think when you do it like that, it just makes the floor look much nicer. Little tip for you. This edge along in front of the stairs, obviously they're having carpet fitted. Um, I've got to leave an expansion gap anyway, but I'm going to be assuming they're going to tack the carpet down. So obviously there's going to be no beading. Now even though I put masking tape on the edge, you can see there's some real fine tear out. So a little tip. Get yourself a black sharpie and all you want to do is just literally just put it along the edge. I mean, obviously you can buy the proper kits for la laminate flooring and stuff. And you just literally put it along the edge and then just run your finger along the edge. And 
close up you can see it but from a distance once you put it down So as you're looking at it from a distance, it doesn't stand out. Obviously, if you look really closely, you can see it. But once the carpet's tucked in there, you're not going to notice any of that. Right, so this plank here wraps around the bottom of the stairs, comes along here, goes round, and then there's a little return. Now, obviously... There was no way I could leave this part on this plank and still hook it round this banister and underneath the stairs. So I've made sure that this bit's cut straight. I put a little bit of black marker on the edge and same on this little piece. And I'm just gonna use some Starbond CA glue and some activator to stick it in place. I'll put some on the tongue. Hopefully I can get this in. Now that joint just looks like any other joint. And then once the beading's around here, you're not going to see a lot of that anyway. Jobs are good. Right guys, well that's going to do it for part two of how I lay laminate flooring. Stay tuned for part three, which will be uploaded in the next day or two. So until then, if you like the video, don't forget to smash the like button. If you're not yet subscribed to the channel, then I'd really appreciate you hitting the subscribe button. And if you tap the little bell icon, you'll be notified of all my future uploads. So if woodworking, tool reviews, or general DIY is your cup of tea or coffee, then hit the subscribe button.